All right, I think we're on. Uh, hello, hello, everybody. It's Saturday, or it will be by the time you watch this or listen to this, it will be Saturday. So it's a different kind of program today because I'm not by myself rambling along and just chatting. I have a gentleman with me there. Never mind, it says Tina Hart. That isn't Tina. He's going to tell you in a minute uh, who he is. But first of all, where are you coming to us from? Where are you right now? I'm based in Derby in the United Kingdom. Okay. So who are we talking to? Who are our guests privileged to be talking to or to be listening to today? Martin Ewoma. Okay. That's simple. And who, who is he? Martin Ewoma. Who is he? I go by many appellations, but Martin, I give you a bit of a background of my, about myself. Um, I'm a human resource consultant. Um, I set up a HR consultancy 20 years ago in the UK. Mm -hmm. And our focus primarily was to try and do what I call um, reverse brain drain. So there are a lot of Africans, Cameroonians and Africans who have spent a lot of their time in education in the West. Mm -hmm. And uh, they are vying or they want to go back and make a contribution towards the development of Africa. And we thought we could set up a vehicle, which was the consultancy. And we had a lot of uh, interest from Africans in the diaspora trying to make connections back with the motherland. Mm -hmm. And so I, I don't see myself as a, as a Cameroonian, those appellations don't work to me. I, I see myself as a son of Africa. So we didn't limit ourselves to Cameroon. We have an office in the Gambia. And of course, naturally we would have an office in Cameroon, which we do. Mm -hmm. uh, so that in a nutshell is what I am about. Uh, my background educationally, I did a diploma in law and did a master's in uh, human resource management and training and then did a postgraduate diploma in training and development. So my, what I'm really, interested in or focused in mostly is improving human capital in terms of their productivity at work. Mm -hmm. But in the recent years, we have uh, expanded our portfolio a little bit more into other areas which are um, trying to set up educational infrastructure across Africa. And right. sometimes we dabble in other things like trying to support European businesses mostly that want to come into Africa. The, the terrain is a little bit rough, so they kind of need a bit of guidance. And that's what, that's where we think our expertise in Africa would be handy for some of those corporations. And we've done a few more. And uh, needless to say, when I've had uh, 20 years, we've done a few countries in Africa, roughly 17 in total that we visited and what. So not that's bad. impressive. That's impressive right there. I heard you talk about, you, you know, the minute you said it, that term, reverse brain drain, it struck a nerve. Yeah. We all know what it's like. And I was wondering, did you find a good response from uh, the diasporans, especially Cameroonians, who were interested in going back? And do you have some success stories? Have you had people who have gone over there and found something to do, maybe even settled back there? Or are they the kind who live, still live in the diaspora and just kind of operate something back at, back at home? No, we we we. Uh, it would be unfair, unreasonable to be calling out names of people. But in the last twenty years, I can't say that we have done successfully relocated upwards of fifty persons, um, and our focus has mostly been to middle to senior management. So we have, um, we had um, long-term contracts with people like Pricewaterhouse, uh, Coopers, um, MTN, in, MTN, the MTN group, not MTN Cameroon, as opposed mm -hmm. to that. And um, we did some work with Standard Chartered. We've done some work with Ecobank as well, mm -hmm. and, and Stan Young, and a few other blue chip companies. So yes, we have had 
Our very first candidate was relocated back to Africa about 15 years ago. And awesome. amongst those that we relocated were a handful of accountants who are in various parts of the world, from Switzerland to uh, Ivory Coast. Some have even gone, some are even out there with you in the United States, although they didn't start with the United States because we don't have any direct interaction with the United States, but through their work, they've ended up in the States. So yes. That's, that's good to know because you see, it, it, they, they, they say, you know how they say, the bad news is what travels faster, it's what is more dominant. We only yeah. hear the nightmare stories, how this one went down there back home and they are now in shambles. And this <laughs> is good to know, yes. And then everybody says, well, like, in that case, I don't want to go. Whereas there are many whose heart tells them, I'd like to go, but then they are scared of the, 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 these stories that they hear and they don't quite know, having been gone a while, what to expect. So I guess people are going to be looking, trying to find you to figure out what it is, what is safe uh, way or is, what makes sense. You know, because sometimes people feel like that because they haven't done their homework or because they lack people like you who could actually let them transition smoothly, make a smooth transition. But you see, all of that is not, sorry, you're going to say something. No, 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 please. please. Okay. But all of that is not really why you are here today. It's not that side of you that we are here um, about. You did mention it in passing. You said, excuse me a little bit, let me get this screen going. You mentioned something about education. I, yes. I caught that bit. And you yes. said that's where you're trying to go. You're veering towards that. Yes. So uh, what is that about? Tell us a little well, bit. I mean, generally, uh, you and I would know that from where we come from and most of life, I mean, the, in terms of um, improvement in, in human output or human development, mm -hmm. education plays a vital role. Mm -hmm. And um, some of us can go back to the old days when we were in Cameroon studying that things were really good. But of course, the educational provision was not enough. That's why the government of Cameroon at the time instituted scholarship programs to send Cameroonians abroad to study, but some of to fill in some of the gaps that were not back home. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, now the educational landscape in Cameroon has changed drastically. Um, loads of um, colleges and schools, and in terms of faculties and, 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 and courses that are offered in even like the University of Yaoundé that you went to mm -hmm. are now more expansive. I remember in our time, the state actually told you what to study in university. Right. Um, within people now, they're about, in Boya, there are about three or four universities. Right. Uh, so the choice for young people now is enormous. Mm -hmm. However, we still realize that there are quite a lot of things which people would like to achieve in terms of the, the courses they would like to do, and there is still the layer and the layer of Western education, which does offer a better chance to succeed in, in the world. Mm -hmm. And to be competitive in the world. Exactly, to be competitive worldwide. And we thought uh, it will be, it is far more difficult for a lot of people who want to study in the West mm -hmm. to study in the West, basically for financial reasons. Mm -hmm. And so we thought if we try and bring the West to Cameroon, it would be something that uh, would fly. So mm -hmm. for argument's sake, in the UK, to do a post, to do a graduate qualification, so three years minimum, mm -hmm. um, you're looking at a minimum of CFA 18 to 20 million francs a year to keep a child here. So roughly, you're looking at about 60 million francs for a child to graduate with the first degree in the UK. Mm -hmm. I am sure the, the, the cost in the US is equally as high right. and in many other European countries. So with our partners, Classpad, and uh, who have a very strong relationship with the University of Bolton, we are now able to deliver we're beginning with short uh, diploma courses, but we can also do top-up courses up to masters and MBAs, which you would study in Cameroon, but you'll be awarded a degree from the University of uh, Bolton if you do the top-up, or 
other um, certification um, accredited boards in the UK. So mm -hmm. that is what we think we're bringing, which is new. Oh, that, 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 that is new, to tell you that. That is new. There's no other way before. I know that back in the day, people wrote those exams. I forget what they, what they call the one that you did for uh, stenography. Corresponding so processes, RSA. Yes. The yeah, rapid results. Yeah. Yeah, yes, yes. Those, those kinds of things. Yes. But in our day and time, I haven't ever heard of anybody being able to take courses uh, to stay in Kabul pretty much and get yourself a uh, what you what you call a Western education. Yes. So, well, uh, so how, well, how does it work precisely? Um, uh, mm -hmm. Thanks okay. to thanks to information technology, you and I can have a conversation and see each other. Mm -hmm. In the old days, it was by pen. You write a letter, it takes three, four, four weeks. By the time the information you're communicating to the other person gets there still. Yes. Um, then, of course, telephones, and now we have the internet. So most of the um, courses will be online. And what we, you know, with all the downsides that we've had with COVID, uh, the one thing that we've learned you in the last 18 months is that being in a physical location, you don't really have to be in a physical location to, to work. Yeah, equally, you don't have to be- I know that only too well. Exactly. You don't have to be in a physical location to study. Mm -hmm. So online courses, even if they didn't pick up before now, this period is just like an opportune period for us to come into the market with, with this. So um, most of the courses are online, but some of them are blended courses. So you have, there's a part which is online and there's a part which is face-to-face. -face. And that brings me to uh, one of the positives that we had in Cameroon by speaking with the Catholic University Institute of Boya, oh, which we currently now have a memorandum of understanding with. And I must add that uh, Professor Julius Ngo, who is the president, was and of course, the provost, Dr. Asobo, they were quite um, helpful in terms of trying to understand what we we're trying to do and seeing what kind of value add we will bring to them because they're already a traditional university and they're doing quite well. Mm -hmm. and so why do they need us? Yes. So we had to convince them that, yes, we're bringing online learning to you, but we'll use some of your academic staff to deliver the face-to-face -face courses. And of course, you would have the opportunity to tap into the online library, which we have in the UK, and there will be exchange programs between faculty staff and of course, okay. students as well. So that in a nutshell, we think will be a win-win situation on both sides. So um, it was tough going, but uh, in the end, we're happy that um, they saw what we're trying to do. And so now, um, Mm -hmm. The physical locations in Cameroon would be at uh, the Catholic University Institute in Boya, which is, for those who don't know it well, it's just kind of adjacently say Moniko, that is a landmark institution in Cameroon. Right. And they do have a campus in Guala. Their campus is, is, is in Bonamusadi, but in the last few months, they've acquired some property in Bonaberry. So as from September of this year, they would actually move the location to Bonaberry where they would carry out a lot I of things. I see. So yeah. students who enroll, okay, but we should, we are, we, I think I'm, we're going a little bit ahead. What yes. is the name, the actual name of the institution that we have now started in collaboration with we, that, that university? Gordon Martins Academy. Gordon Martins Academy. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so, let's, just, let's just go ahead and explain the name. Gordon Martins, that's named after who? Yeah, well, I... My, the, the HR consultancy is called the Martins Consulting Limited. Okay. And so this is just a continuation of it. But if you have to go back into time, I had a good friend of mine, we studied together. His name is Godwin. Okay. And so we, when we first set up together, um, we tried to put Godwin Martin, it wouldn't work. Companies have rejected it and he came, we is the one who actually came out with this genius idea of Gordon Martins and it passed the test that never been registered. So yes, that's the genesis of it. That's somewhat 20 odd years ago. Okay. 
but it's, it's not a novelty now for education. It had been existing, and now this is kind of like what you branched kind of into. Exactly, yes. Yes. Oh, if we are nice. in the business of developing human capital, right. moving into the right in space, the natural progression, we think. It's right in line. So, and you've answered in a number of questions. I was going to ask you as follow up questions. So I was going to say, okay, if you enroll, where yes. do you go? Do you just stay home with your, with your laptop and check online to see if you have courses? Do you actually go to well, a building? Well, we have started a publicity campaign with the support of our partners, the Catholic University Institute of Boya. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Typically, if you happen to stumble on us, if you go on the website www.godinmartinsacademy.org.uk, mm -hmm. you would be able to see a variety of courses that we offer across the board. Some mm -hmm. are as short as a week, and some, like the top of masters, goes to about uh, 18 months. Mm -hmm. So once you register by submitting your desire for a particular course, we would ask you for background information, such as, for instance, if you want to do a postgraduate diploma, whether you have the relevant qualifications. And what once that is done and the fees are paid, you would now have access to the platform where you have video lectures, you the PDF downloads that you can do, and you will have you would have a dedicated online teacher who would be able to support you through the course and of course the course will be explained to you and you would decide to do it at your own pace but we encourage people to do it at the suggested pace which okay. has been laid out and for that reason some of the courses particularly uh the, the online ones which demand face to face you will need to physically appear in the location some of the online courses will be on video links which will be only possible if you go to the physical location so that puts a bit of pressure on you to try and make it sound look like a normal study as a yes setting yeah. yeah that's why what we're calling the blended is what they hear that they're calling it hybrid it was necessary. Okay. It, yeah. it wasn't uh, uh easy for the staff or the students to do completely and totally online things. We all played uh, hanky-panky with, with the thing. I'm talking to a bunch of students. They, they, they will not be showing their faces. And I'm, yeah. I'm pretty sure they're not even there. So I'm just talking and going and going ahead. And sometimes I just call a name or two, and there's actually nobody there. There's something about the physical presence that, that yes. kind of yes. makes you feel a little bit. So I'm glad to hear that it's a, a blend. You do some yes. things online, because at this rate, that way somebody can actually even keep their job. What they can do to make a living? They can, yes, yes. And then and it's online uh, uh, classes. I think yes. that's really neat. Um, so, so when does this academic year start? When, when does everything begin? The courses are not designed in the traditional way of starting from September to mm -hmm. the amount of time. Um, so you can actually, we have elected to start in September. Mm -hmm not because the courses cannot start today, but we still have a few other um, um, technical issues, I should say, to get in place for September. So when we begin in September, for instance, somebody doing a, a training, a diploma course for three months, by December, you'll be finished. Oh, wow. And so Does that somebody, mean mm -hmm. You can start in December and finish in three months' time, or you can start in December and finish in six months' time. But we are tr desperately trying to encourage. We've had a lot of interest, but we've kind of disappointed them by saying that, no, just hold on. We want to be properly set up. So when we start, there are hitches along the way. Hitches. Yes, yes. Because, and okay, and talking about hitches, uh, we all know this, uh, what happens, they say, oh, they don't cut light. In EO has done, <laughs> <laughs> yes, so, 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 thing. so I'm Some of us, you call it Sonel, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you will call it power camera, that's <laughs> it. <laughs> um, uh, that, that, that's what I get from actually going on Facebook, and because I just keep on saying Sonel, so, so, so they're like, we don't have that anymore here. So um, how, how are they going to do, because most of the time you talk to people back home, that is the issue that they've got. 
how are you going, how are you planning on circumventing this or getting them to kind of cope with the with this since it's going to be the part the online part of it? Well, the online part of it, we fortunately on both sides, sites of campuses with the Catholic University, there is a backup, there's backup power. Mm -hmm. So if the if the national grid goes down, the generator kicks in almost yes. immediately. So for that, if you're in the physical location of either of the campuses of the Catholic University Institute of Boya, you really not have that as a problem. Um, the other part that we do, most of the um, online um, material is downloadable. Okay. So you can download the video and watch it at your own pace. You can download the PDF and read it at your own pace. So um, when you have power, mm -hmm. the advice is to download this as particular what? module and put to the side. Yes. Yeah, so if power goes off, you can still continue your work. Yep. And that is the advantage now because if the if power goes off, it, the physical classes cannot will not will not happen either. You're not going to sit down there in the dark in the amphitheater and listen to any lectures. Exactly. Or any doors go out, go go uh, go off for us. So now you with the downloaded content, yes, are in the end are better off than somebody who's waiting to go to class at a time when there's nothing uh, nothing uh, working. So that's that's the plus. You can flip it around and find yeah. that's a plus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you see it as a positive. So we're trying to, oh, yeah. we're trying to make, we're trying to make it as seamless as, 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 as possible. There's, there's a term that they use here, but they say you have to hustle, meaning you have to make it work. You have to oh, find yes. a way. If oh, you yes. want it, you, 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 you could go pay the sixty million then and go try to get on a plane and go try to do the work there and figure out accommodation and all the other issues. Or you can take this opportunity and then yeah. uh, go ahead and make it work. Um, to the best of our, best of your your ability, and so I guess submission of your of the content. Now you've done the coursework and everything. To submit it will be the same way. You submit yeah. it online. Yes, mm -hmm. you and submit it, it online and, and it's marked online. All the corrections are done and sent back to you. And then for the certification, it would be the usual. We will on demand send hard copies not online not soft copies although we because your certificate you want it to look like the real thing so right. the hard copy will be posted out to canyon oh, we'll have, we'll have because... batch, batches of that that would come so of course when you finish you pass they'll send you your certificate online mm -hmm. and, and print on a because soft paper you know, the the original you thing. yes you want to frame it and put it you, up yeah, exactly it. exactly yes with the no. Yes, would ensure that happens, yes. It's not likely to happen because if you were doing your coursework in Cameroon, that's because maybe there were some issues why you were not be able to go to the UK itself to go to class. Yes. But yeah. what, would there be a possibility if somebody said, I want to come do the, my graduation? Would there be a graduation if they so, wanted to? Particularly for the top of masters and the MBA with the University of Bolton, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they could do that there, but okay. And in Cameroon, when the university, uh, the Catholic University is doing its own graduations, are they going to be part of that graduation too or not? I'm talking because I know that we like pomp and our things. To well, go. well, no, no, because you would be, you will not be graduating as, from, as a student of the Catholic University Institute. No, so right. no, you will not, you okay. could be invited to enjoy the atmosphere, but you will not be coming out of there. Because you're not a graduate of the school, obviously. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So uh, now let's talk about the about cost. What is the average? I know it will, it, it will definitely vary uh, because it's not like, like it's not, there's no education that is one size fits all for everything, MBA down to uh, uh, and just IT certification. Mm -hmm. So is it something that you're going to have to go online? Do they find out there what it is that you that each course requires? Well, yes. In a nutshell, yes. But but typically, we would deliver um, courses at one quarter the cost of that particular course in the UK. So for argument's sake, if an MBA would cost you 15 to 20,000 pounds with the University mm -hmm. of Bolton, you can do the same course in Cameroon for 6 million francs. Or for six, sorry. It will cost you about 15 million francs. You can do it in Cameroon for 6 million francs. Okay. So 
and that, I hear the songs of money. I know they have what do they, I, I, I don't know. We have Cash Up here. You have Zelle. You have what? So if somebody wanted to actually register now, do, are they going to be able to do that payment? Like credit? I don't know how many people have credit cards. Back well, in. well, the, the the one thing that technology has done, I always tell people that it seems as if mobile technology was was invented for Africa. Mm -hmm. um, the mobile technology in Africa has been exploited in uh, extraordinary ways that we could not believe would happen. Mm -hmm. So we have the traditional banks, but I mean, in Cameroon now, the fastest and easiest way of moving money is through mobile money. Yes. So we have, um, with, with the two main operators, MTN and Orange, we have mobile money accounts with them, which we are trying to integrate into our system. So that way, if you pay with the code, you would we would have automatic notification and you would have an automatic notification as well. Mm -hmm. So um, the traditional bank to go and deposit money or check into the bank, you can still do that, but that takes slightly longer than uh, paying by it's mobile. It's instant or oh, well, minutes afterwards. They usually exactly. tell you available in minutes, but usually it's instant. We check yeah, it. yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's real time things. Yeah, it's real time, yeah. Wow. So most of the payment will be done um, by mobile money. By mobile money. Yeah. Okay. Say I'm sitting here curious I'm here, and I'm like, I've heard about a course that they are offering, which is like you said, it could take a week, take a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So sitting out here in the diaspora too, can I simply just go to Gordon Martins, go to the website? I, I, I can, yeah, of course you can. Yes. Register too, because that does not make it look like it's only you. You must be in Cameroon. You no, you no, no. No, Which, anybody, anywhere, anywhere on the planet. So it's not only just Cameroonians listening to this or watching this. If you're somebody who is interested, you can actually just go log on uh, to tell me again. It's Gordon Martins. Yes, Academy. Academy. One word. All one word. Gordon Martins Academy. Dot org. Dot org. Like o -R -G. Dot UK. O -R -G dot UK. Yeah. UK. Trust yeah. me, everybody knows. By the time we do Gordon Martins Academy. It will pop up on your on your on your screen. There, you're going to be able to find it. ID. That is the hope. <laughs> <laughs> ID. Even on your I don't. I don't know how Google Analytics work or the the search engine optimization, but we are trying to bring ourselves right up there. So once you do that, education in Cameroon and all those keywords. I was impressed with what I saw just before we started recording this. Um, I went on there and looked at it. It looks a, a very professional looking website. I didn't dare click on the courses because I don't want to actually even see and get bamboozled. <laughs> no, no, the <laughs> courses, no. we have courses for everybody. And But one of the things we are trying to really sell is not just the typical academic courses, but mm -hmm. professional ones. So um, people who graduate and do things like business and finance courses to do sales and marketing, just have professional certificates in marketing and sales and um, other things. And we're working on teaming up with other uh, professional bodies like the Association of Accounting Technicians and stuff like that. So people should be able to be upskilled because the, 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 the world we are facing in the future will be a brave world that if you're not um, well-rounded in terms of um, what you can offer, even you'll be surprised that even in your own country, you'll not be able to have employment because the people who come to invest, they need a return on their investment. So they will be going for the best people. And that, and that is where I was going next. So because you don't just want to get an education for education sake. True. Yeah. We know what we always say, education burdens your mind and blah, 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 yes. so doing poetry and stuff. But you need to eat. You need to survive. Yes, of course. So of course. that's why I, I, I'm glad to hear you already. You, you just went right ahead of me to ask and say, what kind of, what is the guarantee for employment? When I say guarantee, I mean, you cannot guarantee anything. So yes. nobody come and, and, and say, and go and, and do a strike and say, I went to this school and I don't have a job. It doesn't quite work like that. But what the, what the school is trying to do is make your opportunities, give those opportunities where you are marketable. Exactly, exactly. Do you you must you must you must because what we've realized um, 
a lot of the students who come out from universities in Cameroon, maybe it might be across Africa. Mm -hmm. um, yes, they have the academic background, but we're looking at having those soft, adding to their academic qualification, those soft skills that make you market ready. Right. That is where we think we will, our, our, would add more value to people who pass through our institution. Right. Because if not, most of the things that you, courses that used to be offered there in Guaykele, as we called it, what are you really going to do except teach it, teach it right back? It's not practical. It's not going to, you are not able to do re, work with it with today's, what the, today's market is needing yeah. to get you market ready. That is the term right there, to get you market ready yeah. uh, for, for some work and some courses and things that we consider you know, not the real thing. Whereas yeah. the, those, those, those domains, those occupations are needed. And you be, as you said, investors come in, they are looking for whoever it is that has the qualifications, not just a paper, but who's ready, who will yeah. fit in a specific yeah. position and work and make the company uh, progress. So that's really, really important. And that uh, leads me to, sorry, go on. Uh, go on, go on. No, please, please go mm -hmm. on. That leads me to ask, would there be, I don't know whether it exists already in Cameroon, I don't know how much counseling is happening at the A level, um, area, let me hit this thing again because it shifted. I don't know how much counseling is going on at the high schools to kind of, let me say, maybe orientation. Because you see, we have even the, the francophone side, we have back A, back B, back C, mm -hmm. back D. Then we have um, A1, A2, at least back in my day, and maybe I'm showing my age. It, it's still, like, it's, you know, I know. I mean, I, I, I remember being. Was it a history, economics, geography? Exactly. A2 or something like that. Uh-huh. And yeah. it is kind of already cut. Yes. It would do. Yeah. And then you come on out and you're like, okay, exactly where do I fit in this company? So do you know if there's anybody that that would help you if there's if the people just before they get to you to orientate people in certain directions? I I it is not for my own little experience, and I have the by about two, three weeks ago when I was a center in Cameroon, I had the opportunity of sharing a panel discussion on Radio Boya with quite a few people who are into education. The regional delegate of education was present. Uh, the Registrar of the University of Boya was there, mm -hmm. as well as uh, the president of the Catholic University. This is something that generally they all agree that they are struggling with. Uh, but it, 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 it's something that I think needs a, a grassroots revolution in Cameroon for students or children to actually have an idea of what all of us when we we're growing up, uh, we were told what to do. Yes. As opposed to what we would like to do. Right. Now coming out here in the West, my both of my kids went to university and did what they chose to do. Mm -hmm. Not what I would have liked them to do. Right. And, and, and I accept that because I come to realize that at the end of the day is their life. Right. And, and also, even with what they choose to do, sometimes at their age, when they're trying to go and get these courses, they may not be sure what courses they need to take to arrive at that, 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 exactly. that, that, at that end, which is what the counseling and orientation, academic counselors uh, would be there to, uh, to, to look into and send them in the right direction. Well, you would know in this part of the world that is embedded in the educational system. Mm -hmm. It's embedded, you know, you have student cancer. Even some students actually go into university and spend the first year doing something they thought they would have liked to do. Yes. And in the second year, no, 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 no. we're doing it. So, so it's very because, parents who paid that tuition are like, what, what do you mean you don't want to do? Yes, but, but, and you, I mean, I, my, my son, for, for, for instance, he always wanted to do architecture. Mm -hmm. uh, we went to Cameroon when he was seven, met his uncle, one of my cousins, uh, who is an architect, and he got carried away. Yeah. So he wanted to be an architect from the age of seven till right. when he got to like 16, 17, and he still struggled to want to be an architect till one fine day, he was like, but what is this all about? I said, well, I thought it's what you people would like me to be. I said, no, what do you want to do? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I said, if it's what I want to do, this is what I want to do. And he proceeded to university, did a 
a degree in uh, visual communications and photography and came to Paul Vizier. Right. And he's doing quite well. I'm proud and happy for him. But I maybe he would have still passed. I mean, yes. I'm an architect, but I'm not sure. When I see him doing his work, the joy and the happiness and very fulfillment he gets. Um, that is I don't even more than how much money is being made. So that, that's 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 really important. All of us are trying to do that mind shift. All of us, especially as parents, trying to do that mind shift and saying, yeah. "Be prepared for what your, your, your child comes and says they'd like it to do." It is hard. It is uh, hard. But... It isn't easy. Sometimes yeah. they're like, "Oh my goodness!" They come up with very creative things that so about them what to do. And for the typical immigrant parent, we are like, "What did you say? What did you do?" And uh, yeah. so you, you, you yeah. can push it and make a fuss and have an unhappy doctor, or you can let them go be the graphic designer person, the artist person, the person on Broadway doing theater. Oh yes, oh yes, because yeah. a lot of them are bursting with That's talent. At it. A lot of them are bursting with talent. And yes. you know, and some of us in my in our generation have ended up where we are not because we like where we are, but that's it's what they call how for do. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> just like well, and and just kind of get better with that. But now you see people now at my age. I have a, a, a my high school group. The way you see somebody now just learning to play the guitar now because they've always yeah, yeah, yeah. wanted to. But if they had yes. dared tell a parent that oh, they, yeah, I want to go yeah. do music, oh. they have one sackcloth and rolled on the floor to say, "My goodness, what bad luck!" Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm really thankful that you're giving uh, Cameroonian uh, youth because they, they are the future of the country. That you're giving oh, yes, of course. that opportunity to better themselves educationally and to make themselves market ready where either they may work in Cameroon itself, they may be able to find work outside of Cameroon itself as well. And then one more thing I was going to ask you about this whole thing. Yes. I think you kind of touched on it before. Yes. About kind of having Okay, you give not just giving them the diploma and say, go and may the Lord be with you. Would you have um kind of you, you've kind of um how would I call it now, looked around for possible places where they could go and be absorbed? I I I in the course of our conversation, one of the things I did not mention is that we the human resource consultancy has two arms. Mm -hmm. There's the training bit and there's the recruitment and arm of it, which has helped us do a lot of it. And the third thing that we do is that we actually do have what we believe is the premier job portal in Canon. So if we have a job site in Canon. Canonjobs. Canonjobs.net, yes. Yes, I remember that. Yes. So um, whilst we're not, we can't make any promises or we can't give any guarantees, at least we can orientate people towards how to look for work. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, jobs that we, we post jobs on our website. At least 10, 15 new jobs appear there every week. Um, looking for work after graduation is, is a full-time job in itself. Yes, it is. And so, and so you must be committed into getting the job that you would like. Mm -hmm. Maybe the first time now you don't get it, but I mean, some of us remember after graduation, you had about over 100 rejection letters, but mm -hmm. you had to keep on going mm -hmm. because you had no choice. Right. And so we, the hope is that Cameroon, we have problems in Cameroon like most other countries, but the economy is opening up and mm -hmm. things are looking better. And so opportunities are coming. So people need to be ready to play a role in the development of the country. Right. Whether you subscribe to the politics of the country or not, or not. that's an issue. Um, you need to be able to make yourself relevant to the discussion of okay. how do you improve your society. Because, yeah, because there's going to be a lot of rebuilding uh, necessary in all sectors, in all sectors. So it, you, Across Africa, it's not just a Cameroonian right. thing. If right. you look at Central Africa, probably which is next door, there's a problem there. You go to Nigeria in the rivers, there's a problem there. Mm -hmm. You don't need to look far. Yes. And whilst Africa has a very dynamic youthful population, mm -hmm. um, 
most of the youths are unemployed. It is not because there are no jobs in Africa. The problem is that some of them are not qualified for the jobs that are available. Mm -hmm. I give you a, a very worrying statistics, like in Cameroon, we talking to uh, some friends who run uh, Fakoshi. Um, in the entire country, we don't have up to a hundred industrial welders. Wow. Now, if you have a place like Chantier Naval or mm. other places that need these kinds of people, and of course they need these kinds of people, this kind of expertise, they're building a deep seaport in Kribi, mm -hmm. hear about something about like that to happen in Limbe, all this, you know, where are the technicians coming okay. from? You remember back in our day, we all used to laugh at people who went to Ombe. Oh, yes. Went to, yeah. you, you know, the, the actual skilled jobs that we, that we, we kind of thought maybe were to look, that we look low on. But the yeah. ones that actually, it's, it's employment. It's something that you can do and uh, are supposed to be on the bench scheme all yeah, day long. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. I mean, there are huge areas in, for instance, the maritime sector, we don't have in the whole of Cameroon. I'm not sure there are up to ten qualified deep sea divers, and these are people who make enormous sums of money on an hourly rate. You'll be surprised to know that some of them earn about a thousand dollars an hour. Wow! I hope people are really are tuning in and listening. So, nobody that's welding, deep sea diving that you just mentioned there, and somebody know, is sitting there in the cartier, as they call it, just finding a way. Yeah. So. Not just the welding that they do in the right. place like Newtown, yeah, that no, proper stuff. Yes. You know, um, I, I remember way back when the Chad pipeline was being built, we helped in bringing in some manpower welders mm -hmm. from as far as Indonesia. Wow. And we are there, we, we have our youth there. They need yes. the employment and everything. And then what you said there is very, very pertinent. It's not as if we're saying, uh, we can find uh, uh, solutions for every single person, but that right there, we have to we have to learn to be to meet the the the, the tailor what you go get as uh, yeah. an education. Because we think about education, it has to be only strictly academic, meaning you're going to be writing no, 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 some no, books, no. It to be some based. lines. It has to be broad based and and worrying enough for those of us who come from Cameroon um, in the technical sector. Mm -hmm our compatriots in the French speaking side of the country are far more engaged in technical education than we are. But where I thought when I was in Beto was Lycée Technique de Beto. Then when there's Lycée Technique de Kumasi there in- In, 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 in Dumala, yes, in Bali. Actually, yeah. the same things, we had our own bed there, but then you have been Polytech and things of all, think about going higher up in that level, not just the, Panel beta, that's all the level of welding you, you do there no, under somebody's no. car, you know. No, no, I and yes, even including uh, I forgot in the panel discussion also was uh, Professor Ken, who is um uh, okay. the director of the John Ken, who is the director yes. of the yes. advanced school of um, he taught me in, in well I better not even bring that up because he taught me in Sika, he taught Mark, and I didn't pass. I definitely did not pass yes, it. Yes. It's not his fault at all because he was a brilliant man, but it's just yes, some of us. Yes. But I know him. But, but, but one of the things he was trying to put through was that there is now an entrance examination into the, I think it's the advanced school of, um, what is it called? I, Public I, Works. Public, Public Works. That's it. The advanced school. Now they are doing courses like architecture. There you go. Doing courses in architecture, they are doing courses in survey, survey, they are doing, oh, so their portfolio has increased. Finally. But it gave, it gave us a very worrying thing that imagine that there are 400 places mm -hmm. and 4,000 candidates write the mm -hmm. entrance examination. 3,000 of those candidates come from a particular part of the country. Right. Now, if we have to go by how people perform, if 3,000 people come from a particular part of the country, the chances are more of them 
will be in the 400 that will be admitted. Mm -hmm. And after the course, when they go into the labor market, there is a, the, 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 the balance, balance. Is, is skewed towards a particular region. And then we can start interpreting it differently in terms of how we see things through tinted glasses. But the, he made the point, I remember quite clearly, that mostly students in the Northwest and Southwest provinces should apply for the entrance examination in, into the higher school of um, advanced school of public works. Public works. There is the main one is in Yaoundé, but there's one mm -hmm. in uh, Boya. I right. See. Yeah, we don't look at it. Yes, everybody wants to become. I mean, if we all succeeded in fulfilling our parents' dreams, both of us would have been arguing maybe in court, right? We could have both been lawyers, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> or doctors. We, can't come over to that. we should explore other things. Yeah. I, I, I don't know how to do to, 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 I mean, to thank you for this for looking into something that needs doing. We have a, a youth, there's the, a huge part of the population. And we know that frustrated youth and uh, unemployed youth, idle youth, not a good thing for any country. No, it's the, not. The crime rate is going to go up. There's going to be lots of issues that we cannot, uh, uh, we don't want to see. And it's not for want of, it's not because they are choosing, they're necessarily choosing that option. But if they are idle, not very many idle youth sit and say, I have nothing to do, let me go pray. Mm -mm. The things that they, that they choose to do. Well, I, I can assure want. that prayer is the last thing they will think about. <laughs> this, <laughs> it's that they, they will find something to do which may, yeah. might involve some, some burglary and some kinds of things or some drug issues and stuff. So yeah. uh, when you provide them a, a, a somewhere that they could go to better themselves, gain knowledge which, which, which nobody can take from them because you get your knowledge and certification, it's part of you. You've earned it. Yeah, it's so, not a farm that somebody can come and seize your farm. No, no, no. You burn your, 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 your corn that you planted and potatoes down. It's in your head. You have to do, yes. It becomes it your DNA, yes. Mm -hmm. Well, I, 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 I think one of the things that the policymakers in Cameroon need to really, really think about is how to implant orientation of students at a very early stage. It should I remember, you would remember that in our time, one fine day, some people came from the delegation and came and did some, what now we know is a psychometric test. Mm -hmm. And that is when they say, okay, when you go to Nwakele, you will do his you, yeah. you will do law, mm -hmm. you will do letters, you will do so. Um, you really had no choice. Yes. If you went to the University of Yaoundé, you did what the man from the delegation told you that you I told did. you to do. And he, 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 what he used is the criteria he used to make that assertion. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Oh. It's now that we know that I used to do things like psychometric and, tests. Uh, so yeah, far. and even after doing that, no matter what he used as his criteria, where was he sending you to? There was the one where killing with those yeah, sure. faculties that you just mentioned there. Yeah. It's now I'm even getting that there's Yaoundé A and Yaoundé Deux and Wera Soa and whatever else. You had that one little campus. When I studied at the University of, of, of Boya there, when they went to do my translational in, interpretations with the ASTI, that was the entire, that was the, the entire campus was that one school. Yes. So yes. we were there, 40 of us yes. in that entire campus that is the University of Boya, one little uh, place. So that, that, that diversification branching out and this idea of bringing, to say, well, if the mountain cannot, if, if uh, uh, Mohammed cannot go to the mountain, you bring the mountain to Mohammed, it's what you've done. Yeah, right there to yeah. uh, 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 Cameroon and pretty much the world because it's available online. So I would say, people, you have your nephew, you have your niece, cousin, uncle, because now this is not the age thing where they say, okay, look at your age. You are too old to go and do this. If you can read and you can write. Um, you certainly can do it. It's not like the kind of one where they say, how old are you? You say you're 18, you want to come aside from one. <laughs> They're like, I don't think you can do this uniform. No, no, no. no, no, no. So now you have this opportunity. You're listening to this. Encourage your cousin, your nephew, your niece, you yourself listening. Go get yourself some kind of certification that can actually make you market ready. On with the market getting this crowded, maybe something that can put you a notch above the competition. Because exactly. people are vying, are vying for this one position. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You come what and... 
sorry. As they, say in the, as they say in the parlance, what is it that, what is your unique selling point? What differentiates you from all other candidates? Correct. Everybody has graduated with, okay, if you want to say first class degree, mm -hmm. 10 of you have a first class degree. Now, why should they take you? That's right. So go get one of these certifications that you can actually put in that little resume of yours and go and type it on LinkedIn and say, hey, I have, I've got this too. That puts and you above person... the rest. And uh, yes, you improve your life chances, of course. Right, right. Yeah. Look at things like some people I, uh, say, said, okay, I don't like this French. They forced me to do it in Guayaquil and everything. But now you've come on out here to the United States and they're looking for a job where they need somebody who may have a working language of French. You're like, hey. Here I go. The other ones would sit down there and cannot speak it. They are like, too bad for you. You That same thing you did not like has exactly. not been much above everybody, exactly. everybody else. Exactly. So, yeah. Um, yes. Any, what's, so what's your last word? What's a little, your closing remarks or an appeal for what you have to it, say? It, it was not an entertaining chat, which I didn't know that we spent, we already had half an hour of talking. No, I, I my, my thing is, 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 is to encourage everybody. Uh, if you think that you are not where you have to be, you should take a second look at yourself and challenge yourself into trying to be better. And we are only there to play a very small part into your life's journey. And we'll be happy and able to support you across that. And, you know, we, Myself and my colleague in Canon, uh, Terry Parish, we are at hand to advise on a one-to-one -one basis those who reach us. So if you go to the website, you'll see um, phone numbers and you can send us an email at info at godinmartinsacademy.org.uk and we'll be happy to have a conversation with you and see how best we can support your development. I, and I would, I would just back him up and say, take that opportunity. What does it cost you? It, it's there and there's a number. Call it, see, see what it is that you can find out and take the, make use of the opportunities that have been brought to your doorstep pretty much. Uh, you want to go, as they used to say, you want, you want to go over. Okay, over has come and met you. Right exactly. in, 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 there's in, no need to fall bush again. <laughs> right, <laughs> right We are both bush yeah. to go oh yeah. And yeah. well, uh, yeah. Yes. yes. So thank you so very much for coming to talk thank to us. You. Right Thanks here. for having me. Thanks for You're me. welcome. So it, it is Godin Martins, Godin Martins okay. Academy. Dot dot org. Org. Dot UK. Dot UK. Yeah. All right. Go check it out. So thank you very much. Yes. So thank you for being here and enlightening us. It's been a, a good conversation and an eye-opening one too. One that gets us to think, which is what I want to do here, get people to think and improve yourself. Uh, and make the best of life. So, uh, yeah. sorry. So I say the pleasure is all mine. It was oh, a pleasure no. chatting with you and thanks for having me. No, it, 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 it had to be done. Once I heard that there was this, I was like, the opportunity needs to be, to be, to be put out there. So people know that they can, they can use it, take advantage of it. All right, so it's been uh, Egben Biwan Monjimbo coming to you on Busa World Radio, or maybe you're going to be watching the video part of this. Thank you always for watching or for listening, whichever one. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday, the rest of your week, whenever it is that you're watching this. All the best. And I'll talk to you later, Mula. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.